Hi guys, Miss Peterson here, and welcome to AP Physics 2 Lecture 4-4, all about RC circuits. So in this lecture, we're going to be talking about um, what an RC circuit is and how RC circuits or resistor capacitor circuits, not remote control, uh, work as they start charging, the capacitor becomes fully charged and reaches what we call steady state. Okay, so we're actually going to start this out with a demonstration. Okay, first where we have a battery and a resistor and a capacitor in series. Now, once this switch right here is closed, what do you think is going to happen to the current in the circuit? What do you think is going to happen? to the potential difference or the voltage um, across R1, okay? What do you think is going to happen to that voltage? What do you think is going to happen to the voltage across the capacitor, okay? Let's go ahead and look at it. So here I have that circuit set up currently with the switch open. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and close the switch, and I want you guys to watch what happens to the voltage across the resistor, the capacitor, and to the current in the circuit. So we close that switch. Okay, going to go ahead and pause it right there. So zooming in right here on this graph across the resistor, we see that the voltage across it automatically jumped up to about 3 volts, that same of our battery. And then it started to decrease, where the capacitor did the opposite, okay? It started out at 0 and then it gradually increased until it got to about 3. And for the current in the circuit, we can see it jumped up to about 0.3 and then gradually decreased, okay? This resistor had a value of 10 ohms, so the total resistance was 10 with our 3-volt battery. 3 divided by 10 gives us that 0.3 amps of current. And why that happens is that immediately after we close the switch, okay, the current through R1 is going to be equal to that voltage of the battery divided by R1, okay? Because that's going to be the total resistance, okay? Equals the current going through that resistor 1. It's a series circuit, so that really is the total current, okay? Now, that's going to be immediately after the switch is closed. And then it will gradually approach zero at the end, okay, at what we call steady state, okay? Because once this capacitor is fully charged, I'll let it play for a little so we can see that, okay? And you can even see it in those electrons. They're not moving anymore. There's no more current flowing in the circuit because that capacitor is fully charged and has blocked the flow of current, okay? So the... Current flowing through the capacitor R1, it's a series circuit, so that will be the same, okay? So it will be the same as all of there. It'll start at some total current and approach zero. Now, for the potential difference across R1, okay, what you saw that immediately after that switch is closed, the capacitor acts like a wire. So immediately after the switch is closed, Okay, this potential difference is going to be equal to that of the battery. So at first, okay, immediately after the switch is closed, delta V for R1 will equal uh, the voltage change of the battery. But after a long time, okay, it will approach zero. Where across the capacitor, we saw the opposite, okay? Across that capacitor, we saw the voltage, see, can I scroll that over? Nope. But you can see how the voltage was increasing in that part. It was decreasing on the resistor and increasing across the capacitor. So across the capacitor, it would go from zero to the voltage of that battery. Okay. So that charge will build up. The charge will start at zero and will build up to, well, our main equation for capacitance is a uh, uh, or Q equals delta V times C. So it'll build up to the voltage of the battery to Q total, which will be the voltage of the battery times its capacitance. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. But how does that work if we hooked it up in parallel? Let's go ahead and look at that one. 
Okay, so here in this parallel circuit, we can track the total current coming out of the battery, the voltage across the bulb. I changed it out to a bulb for this one so you can see how the power or the brightness of that bulb changes as that capacitor charges. Um, and then we have the voltage across the capacitor. So go ahead and make your predictions. What do you think is going to happen when I close this switch? And let's go ahead and do it. Make sure this is on there. So we see that current almost immediately jump up, okay? And then we see that discharging through the battery. Okay, let's go ahead and look at that one more time. To make it a little bit slower, I'm going to add a resistor here with the capacitor, um, just so the change is a little slower and you guys can see what's going on there, okay? So I'm still just measuring the voltage across the capacitor, but I added that resistor in there so we get a little bit slower change. Okay, let's go ahead and close that switch. And there we go. We see immediately the voltage of that battery jump up and that voltage of the capacitor climbs. Okay, for this one, we see its current stays at a super low or negative range. Okay, about negative one where when I didn't have that resistor in there, okay, take that back out of there, close that circuit up, we can see that the capacitor will still become fully charged, okay, equal to that of the battery. If I go ahead and pause this and discharge that capacitor, oh, animation speed limit reached, okay, discharge, okay, we can still see that voltage. The voltage is going to jump up immediately, okay, due to that capacitor. Then eventually, once that capacitor is fully charged, we have no more current flowing in this top branch of the circuit, and it's still cycling through that light bulb, okay? So for the current going through R1, okay, in this circuit, as soon as the switch is closed, okay, all of that current will be going, or uh, the capacitor will act like a wire. So all of the current will just be going in that loop with the capacitor. So the current will be zero at first, okay? It is a short circuit. And then as time goes on, it will approach the total current. The total current in the battery, okay? There would be no more current flowing in this path once it's fully charged. So the total current would just be the voltage of the battery divided by that resistor, okay? Where the current going through C1, initially it is just that total current. So it's like infinite amount of current immediately, okay? It's just all flowing there. There's like no resistance. Um, so it starts out like crazy high, okay? And then as that capacitor charges, its resistance increases. So it approaches zero, okay? Now, for the potential difference across R1, well, the whole time it's connected to the battery. So it's going to be equal to the voltage of the battery the whole time because it's connected directly to the battery, just like the capacitor. The delta voltage across the capacitor will also equal that voltage of the battery the whole time. And it will take a, if in this like hypothetical circuit, because we have that current at infinity, basically, Okay, because the resistance is zero. So current is voltage over resistance. If the resistance is zero, current approaches infinity. Um, but for uh, as it, that just happens for like a brief, brief, brief second. And then as it charges, it'll charge up to that voltage of the battery. Okay, but it happens really, really quick unless there is a resistor in series with it to slow that process down. And for the charge stored on C1, okay, basically immediately it will be equal to the voltage of the battery times that capacitance. Okay, cool? Okay, cool. So that's an RC circuit. When we're charging a capacitor immediately after the switch is closed, the capacitor will act like a wire. Okay. 
Okay, so when you have more resistance in a circuit, it's gonna take longer for that capacitor to charge. Okay. And immediately it's like that, and then once it's fully charged, we say that circuit has reached steady state, so the values of its voltages and currents won't be changing. Okay, when it is in steady state, the capacitor acts like an open switch. Okay. Um, its resistance is approximately equal to like infinity, okay, because it has that built up electric field to prevent the flow of charge flowing through it, and no current will flow in the branch containing the capacitor. Now, in the AP curriculum, you will only need to analyze RC circuits either immediately after they're connected or in steady state. You do not need to worry about the voltage or the current in that in-between state. While you should have a conceptual understanding of what's going on, you do not need to know the mathematical equations for that. Okay, so let's just go ahead and practice analyzing some circuits. Starting with this one, okay? Now, okay, as soon as the switch is closed, Okay, remember the capacitor acts like a wire. Okay, so C, capacitor, like a wire. So I actually prefer to redraw the circuits in that state. So immediately, if the capacitor is acting like a wire, okay, we would just have that 12 volt battery and the 6 ohm resistor in parallel with the 3 ohm resistor. And we just have a simple circuit there. Immediately after that switch is closed, no voltage or no potential difference is built up across that capacitor yet, so we don't have any charge stored on it yet. For these ones, they're both connected directly to the battery, so the total voltage is going to be the voltage on each of them. It just becomes a simple circuit for us to solve, okay? If we know the voltage and the resistance, we can use V equals IR to find that current. 12 divided by three is four amps in this path. Oh, sorry, four amps in that path and two amps in this path, okay? For a total of six amps of current, going into the battery. So then 12 um, divided by six gives us that total resistance of two ohms, which again, you could also find from one over our total equals one over six plus one over three, okay? Now in steady state, a long time later, the capacitor is going to act like an open switch. So I'll just call it steady state. In steady state, we still have that 6 ohm resistor, okay? And we have that 3 ohm resistor, but then it's like having an open switch there for the capacitor, okay? So we can tell because of that open switch, the capacitor acting like an open switch, no current is going to be flowing in that path. So the current going through the 3 ohm resistor would be zero meaning there's no voltage across it either, okay? But we still have the two terminals of the switch here that are connect that spot, okay? So the voltage across that switch, across the capacitor, will be equal to that 12 volts, okay? So using um, the base equation for capacitance, which is, I believe, V equals, delta V equals Q over C, Okay, uh, delta V equals Q divided by C. We can calculate that we have six times 10 to the negative three coulombs of charge stored on that capacitor. Okay, solving out the rest of the circuit for that six volts, it's um, voltage across it still hasn't changed. So we got 12 volts and two amps of current. But now, since there's no current flowing here, 
there is only that single path for current to flow. So that's also going to be the total voltage and the total resistance. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. Now, one other thing I want to talk about is just how to redraw these circuits because it does change a little bit. Um, this one, because we have we switch and the open capacitor, well, if it's in steady state, the capacitor just acts like an open switch. So the switch closed, but then the capacitor acts like an open switch. So this is one of the examples where the capacitor is really just changing the behavior of the circuit and which elements are in series and which elements are in parallel, rather than actually participating in that circuit. Because we're not going to have a voltage difference across it in either uh, state. Um, and let's, let me go ahead and show you that because that is part of the confusing, um, one of the hard parts of this is just figuring out what this circuit would look like uh, when the capacitor or acts like a wire versus when it acts like a switch. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with uh, as soon as the switch is closed. Okay, so as soon as the switch is closed, this path is going to act like a wire. So let's redraw the circuit considering that path as a wire. So we got our 20 volt battery. Okay, and then coming out, and then we have a junction here. And at that junction, we can either go to the 6 ohm resistor or to that 12 ohm resistor. So I'm going to redraw it and make that super clear. Okay, so it can go to the 6 ohm resistor or the 12 ohm resistor. Okay, and then after it goes through those resistors at these two points, it can either go to that 4 ohm or to the 8 ohm. Okay, it's another junction because that switch is just like a wire. So it comes together, and then again, it can either split and go to the 4 ohm resistor or the 8 ohm resistor. And we have uh, this circuit to solve. Okay, um, so let's go ahead and solve this circuit. Um, I think the easiest way here is going to be to combine... Uh, these two that are in parallel and make a simple series circuit. So let's go ahead. RC circuits are a great review of just solving circuits. So if I were to combine these two resistors, I would do 1 over R total equals 1 over 6 plus 1 over 12. Okay, and I would get that R total then is equal to 4 ohms. Okay. Then for the other one, okay, I have a 4 and an 8 ohm resistor, okay, so I would have 1 over R total equals 1 fourth plus 1 eighth, um, so that's like 3 over 4 is our total, so 4 over 3, wait, 1 over 4, 1 over 8, 1 over, yep, cool, so 3 eighths or whatever, it comes out to 2.5. Two and two thirds, or two point six 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 six. I'll say two point six seven ohms. So that is our equivalent circuit in a simple form. Okay, we can tell there then that the total resistance. Okay, our total is just going to be four plus two point six seven, so six point six seven. Okay. And then we know that total voltage is, of course, the 20 volts. So the total current flow in here will be 20 volts divided by 6.67 ohms, which gives us about 3 amps of current. Yep, 2.9999, so 3 amps of current flowing. Okay, that is the total current flowing in uh, the circuit. So for the voltage, okay, the voltage drop from there would be equal to that 20 volts 
divided by 4 ohms, so a 5 volt potential difference. Now remember, this 4 ohms is really this 6 and this 12 ohms. So, wait, 20? Oh, <laughs> I know how to math. That's not how I do it. V equals IR. So I have 3 amps <laughs> times 4 ohms for a total of 12 volts. Now remember, this 4 ohm resistor is actually here and here. So that tells us that across our 6 ohm resistor and across our 12 ohm resistor, we have 12 volts. Okay, which means uh, 20 minus 12, we must have 8 volts across that one. And you could also check it from 2.67 times that 3 amps. Okay, 2.66667 times 3 gives us 8 volts. Okay, so we can use those to find the currents. Okay, V equals IR. So current is just voltage divided by resistance. We got two amps flowing here and one amp flowing there for a total of three amps, okay? And then it gets split here into one amp through the eight ohm resistor, two amps through that four ohm resistor, okay? And we've solved our circuit. Now, in steady state, a long time later, let's go ahead and draw that circuit. Um, also, for the capacitor, one of the ways that you can understand that voltage difference is by looking at where that voltage difference is. So it is across the 6 and the 12 ohm, in between the 6 and the 12 ohm, and we can see that there's no potential difference there after the 6 ohm and after the 12 ohm resistor. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and talk about steady state. So once that happens, then... Okay, it's kind of like this path in the middle doesn't exist, okay, because it is acting as a fully charged capacitor. So to redraw that circuit, we got our 20-volt battery, okay, we got this junction where we could go to the 6-ohm and the 4-ohm resistor before it comes back together, and this one would go through the 12-ohm and the 8 ohm, okay? Now, the capacitor is in between the 6 and the 12, okay? So that capacitor is on those two junctions. Let's see if there will be a potential difference across it there, okay? So we got 20 volts. Um, if I'm going to simplify this circuit, okay, I would make it a simple parallel circuit. So I got the 20 volts. And then it's going to a 10 ohm resistor, okay, 6 plus 4, 12 plus 8 is 20, so a 20 ohm down at the bottom. And now we just have a simple parallel circuit. Okay, let's go ahead and zoom on in here. So in this circuit, uh, the voltage uh, difference across each of the, these will be equal to 20. So that tells us that we have 20 divided by 10, so 2 amps of current flowing here, which remember is this point, so 2 amps, and 20 divided by 20, 1 amp flowing through this path, okay? So we can add that to our chart. Through the 6 and the 4 ohm resistor, we have 2 amps of current, and through the 12 and the 8 ohm resistor, we have 1 amp of current, okay? And you might notice that this is the same as this, which we would expect, okay? The steady state is going to be identical because of how that switch behaves. Okay, so we got 12 volts and, oops, yep, so 6 times 2, 12 volts, potential difference there. 4 times 2, 8 volts there. 12 times 1, 12 volts there. 8 times 1, 8 volts there. So our voltage drop across the 6 ohm resistor is 12 volts, meaning the potential here, 20 minus 12, is at 8 volts. Potential difference across this 12 ohm resistor is also 12 volts, so that point is also at 8 volts. There's going to be still no charge stored on the capacitor. Bit of a useless circuit. Um, since that total current is at 3 amps, we can tell 
that that total resistance is going to be the same. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. Now, I did want to talk, even though we don't mathematically need to know it, I did want to show you guys how uh, the variables of that capacitor do change as it charges and doesn't charge. Um, so we know as it charges, the current decreases. When it discharges, the current increases. Now the rate of that is determined by something called the time constant, T, which is equal to the resistance times the capacitance. And this totally makes sense that something's going to take longer to charge when you have more resistance. Why? Okay, well, you're gonna have slower current. Okay, slower current. And then we know that current is the rate of the charge flow. So the Q is going to take longer to build up. Because it's that flow of charge that has to charge the capacitor. Okay. Um, now the actual math of it is given by this equation and this equation. It's an exponential notation where you have the T, the time, okay, relative to that time constant, so how many time constants it's been. Um, after about four time constants, it's at about 99% charged, okay? After one time constant, I believe it's at, yeah, 63% charged. Um, but again, we only need to know it at time equals zero and at time equals infinity, so a long time later, okay? Now, at time equals zero, Q equals zero, the change in voltage across it is also zero. So the current in the flowing in the circuit will just be the voltage divided by the bat of the battery divided by the resistance, okay? In the circuit, just like we saw in our um, intro demo, okay? After a long time, okay, the total charge on the circuit will equal that voltage of the battery times the capacitance the voltage on the capacitor will equal the voltage of the battery and the current will equal zero. Okay, and that's how it works. Feel good about solving all these circuits? Okay, cool. Okay, cool.